John Bo, fellow life adventurers, it's Mike Dooley. Super excited to be broadcasting live from Orlando, where I will soon be joined with my favorite past life regressionist on planet Earth, who's in Berlin at this moment. But before I bring her on, I just want to welcome all of you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for your curiosity. Thanks for the wonder that clearly stirs in your heart. I think wonder is, is the golden key to accessing Whatever your heart desires, infinite wisdom, wealth and abundance, friends, laughter, healing, and that you're here, you're open, you're ready to go to another level. You're saying, yes, this is possible, and it so is. I, I think there's nothing that could hold any of us back more than a closed mind or a closed heart. Uh, and I think that that spark that is innately within all of us too often gets tarnished or suppressed and and we stop asking big questions but big questions imply the existence of big answers we are the eyes and the ears of the divine come alive in the dream of life for whom all things are possible and for me in my search for answers my entire life um, I have always kind of looked around the fringes of society if you saw my announcement email about this uh interview with a past life regressionist and our recent newsletter, I fessed up that my first uh, resource for finding big answers was my high school's library. And there I found books on hypnosis. Hypnosis, the power of harnessing the otherwise unimaginable torrents of energy that imagination can unleash. This is hypnosis. This is um, being moved by a suggestion, um, getting out of our own way. And that's my interest in hypnosis to this very day. And early on, as I shared, I found that there are some really skilled uh, hypnotists, hypnotherapists, and there's all kinds of modalities that perhaps fall under that umbrella that are actually able to help people unlock their strengths and and release hidden, suppressed energies by taking them back in time and further back and further back. And it's not unheard of at all, although it was for me a long time ago in my high school's library to, to understand that we can transcend lifetimes. And if you understand, as did Einstein share with us, it's common knowledge that time is an illusion. There's really one now, this eternal now that we're all operating from, there are, there are future life regressionists, regressionist is not the right word, that can help you visit the future. Uh, it's all happening simultaneously. And why would we do that? Well, apart from the, the mind-boggling nature of it and what we might discover about functioning reality, science, but ourselves, what we might unlock within ourselves, finding out what our gifts are, finding out what our blocks are, um, seeing things plain as day. And it's like, oh my gosh, I, I get it now. Okay, I'm not alone. This is one big adventure into the illusions because we can, because we wanted to, because we'd fall in love again and again and again. Well, anyway, my fascination has never ended. And I even had an experience with Mariah, who you're about to meet, when she did a, a, a group regression for me and my team that was mind-bending. I'll tell you about it a little bit later on. I'll share more how to get in touch with Mariah a little later on. But all right, enough of this, enough of me, okay? I know you're not here to hear from me. I apologize. Mariah, are you there? I am. Hi, okay. Mike. I'm going to let you pronounce your beautiful last name, Mariah, because I'm <laughs> not any good at that, those kind of sounds. Yeah, so I'm originally from the Netherlands, and in the Netherlands you say my first and last name, Mariah Terluin. Uh, in the English version, I make it into Mariah Terluin. Oh, well, it's beautiful, and I'm glad you did Thank that you. for us. And so yeah. you all know her background. Obviously, she is the past life regressionist. She's originally from, she just told you, uh, the Netherlands, yeah. now lives in Berlin, Germany, where she is this very moment as we broadcast live, mm -hmm. intercontinental. She guides yes. people through their past lives to help them live their current life to the fullest potential. That's the juice here. Mariah is certified in Dolores Cannon's quantum healing hypnosis technique. 
Dolores Cannon fans, you're in the right place. Oh my gosh, Dolores Cannon is legend. Um, I highly encourage you all to look her up. Maybe we'll learn some more about Dolores' methods from Mariah shortly. Um, she's a level three practitioner, but the unique thing about Mariah is that she's also developed some of her own past life regression techniques. She's been doing this a while. Uh, she knows what works and she knows how the session can have the biggest impact in your present life today. She helps people connect with their higher selves. That's part of the program. So we're really honored and thrilled, Mariah, to have you with us. I know it's evening where you are. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for letting us cut into your private life. I, I I presume there's other better things you could be doing right now. Um, I'm not sure. I think this is pretty cool. This is cool. And we're so mm -hmm. thrilled that we have so many thousands and thousands of people joining us. Maybe we'll try to get a number before we're done, but it's, um, you know, in the tens of thousands, I'll tell you right now. So welcome aboard, everybody. We're going to dive into this interview uh, very, very shortly. Um, just because I said something about Dolores Cannon, would you like to share how you found her or uh, what made her techniques uh, so resonant with you, Mariah? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I have to give you a little bit of a, a background before I can tap into the Dolores Cannon story, because it all happened uh, in a pretty special way, I have to say. Um, to be very honest, if you would have asked me eight years ago if I believed in reincarnation, my answer would be absolutely not. <laughs> so as you can see now, a lot has changed in these eight years. Um, and it all started, um, yeah, when after, shortly after I read the book by Brian Weiss, uh, Many Lives, Many Masters. And this is a book that is honestly the perfect doorway book into the magical world of past life regression. Because in this book, Brian really takes you from, you know, him being a skeptical to at the end of the book, him being really the biggest advocate for past life regression and also on his journey into uh, yeah, understanding reincarnation. So what happened is I was not a spiritual person. Uh, I moved to Canada. My husband is Canadian. And in Canada, a lot of things started to shift and to change. And there was one thing that I really noticed as I uh, really firstly moved there, which was that in the evenings, uh, after a day of work, I used to be a graphic designer. In the evenings, I would be home and I would feel this feeling that I am missing something. I would feel this restlessness that I'm supposed to be learning something and I'm not learning it. So at that time, I started doing all these different kind of uh, graphic design courses and nothing took that feeling away. It really was with me for maybe over a year. Then uh, the Brian Weiss book was gifted to me by a friend. And I'm reading this book and I'm completely fascinated. But at the same time, I'm also actually completely confused because sure, I've heard about reincarnation, but... I never really thought about it much. And nobody in my environment talked to, talked to me about this. I was raised without religion, without any spiritual insights. Um, and the next morning, something happened that completely turned my life around. And it really happened within probably 20, 20 to 30 seconds. So I read a third of Brian's book. I go to bed, confused, puzzled, yet fascinated. And I wake up, walk to the bathroom, thinking to myself, what is it about this reincarnation? Is it something I should believe or is it something that's just not, not true? And while I'm thinking this, I heard a voice outside of myself and this voice said, you knew about reincarnation all along. It's just time for you to remember it now. And Mike, honestly, it was really as if I was hit by lightning. Like my whole body was just really... <sighs> It electrified. <laughs> I was really a little bit panicked also because I didn't know this could happen. Uh, it, it hasn't happened since all either, but I was really like, oh my God, what is this? Well, I knew from that moment, okay, this is true. I felt it throughout my whole system and I decided, okay, then I need to know everything about reincarnation, but also and everything about past life regression and about spirituality in general, because there was a whole world out there that I knew zero about. So this is really where it started. Uh, I started reading all about Brian Weiss. And then what happened is I learned actually through uh, a medium to channel my spirit guides. And it was my spirit guides that told me about Dolores Cannon. I had never heard of her. 
my spirit guide said, there's a woman in America, you can take her online course. And this is the course that you have to take. And so right away, I'm Googling this name and I'm figuring out what is this? I saw at that time I could do a live course. And there I went. And this whole feeling of I'm supposed to be learning something and I'm not learning it, of course, went completely went away. Yeah. Your spirit guides told yeah. you about Dolores Cannon. They told you how to spell her name and all that. All the things. Yeah. Are you kind of psychic or gifted in that way to hear voices and talk and, and hear spirit guides and words? It's a really good question. I think to be very honest, we all are. Uh, I never considered myself as a psychic person, uh, but ever since I've been doing this work, I've been exposed to working also with mediums, developing my own psychic abilities, my own intuition, trusting what my intuition, my higher self is saying, trusting what my spirit guides are saying. What happens is that it seems to be like a muscle that keeps getting stronger and stronger. I think to hear this voice in the very beginning was very drastic. And I think it was completely necessary for me to turn my life around because at that time I was really blue to all of this. And as you can see now, that is, uh, yeah, this, this is my life purpose. This is what I'm here for. Wow. That is really wild. And so what do you, what can you say about Dolores Cannon's methods <clears throat> uh, and higher self uh, yeah. being central that uh, are unique? Yeah, what I what I love about Dolores is that uh, in general, her teachings, not just about regressions, but in general, she really just shares everything that she finds and she's doing it in a way not even to convince anyone. She just really shares all these amazing things that have become lost knowledge and through her technique, she found such a beautiful, direct way for people, anyone can do this, for people to access their past lives. And the beauty with Dolores, her technique is, which I really love most, is that she uh, gives full, um, yeah, uh, the full permission to the higher self of the client to decide whatever life it wants to show. Because it knows everything about you. It knows everything why you've come into this life, mm -hmm. uh, what other lifetimes you've had, what plan you have in this life. And Dolores says, if you leave it completely over to the client's higher self, you always know that they're in the best hands. You always know that uh, they're going to get the most benefit. So this is really uh, a way that is really completely safe because there's a lot of different regression techniques out there and all are very valid and beautiful. What I love about Dolores is that People never get too much. They never get more than they can handle. They never get overwhelmed. Yeah. The higher self wants to inspire people and it wants to motivate people. It wants to bring confidence to people and help them get clarity, make decisions, whatever it is. But it's always to make you, uh, yeah, to make your life better, to improve uh, the life that you're living right now. So this for me is the most beautiful thing. I was really struck by that when you were explaining it to me privately. And then when we did the group um, regression for my office team and myself, you know, remotely, you were in Berlin, we were in the USA. And I have to say that just the whole notion of the involvement uh, and the conscious involvement uh, mm -hmm. of the higher self being present and kind of in control of the experience, uh, the higher self is all loving, no ego, uh, mm -hmm. no limitations, and with a perspective of you know why we chose each one of us this lifetime, yeah. and thereby what we could most benefit from hearing or seeing. So, yeah. the number of past lives, uh, you know, is uh, is a wild because there, Jonathan Livingston Siegel, Richard Bach, they talk about tens of thousands of other incarnations. Some mm -hmm. folks think the number is much smaller. Hey, there's yeah. no shortage of time or space. Why not live a million? And then <laughs> you still got eternity before you. Exactly. So, <laughs> so when you've got so many lifetimes going on, um, uh, you would want higher wisdom, your higher mm -hmm. self filled yeah. with love to kind of mix and match. You know, this lifetime, this experience, this lesson, this gift is what you would most benefit from now. Yeah. They're part of our, our, our fans in the unseen. We all have fans. We are all here uh, with a support system beyond the physical senses uh, realm. 
And the, the beauty is that the higher self really sees the bigger picture, you know, and it can yeah. show you the bigger picture through giving you a past life that will help you realize something. You know, it might help you realize where a certain reaction comes from, or it might help you realize where a certain passion comes from, or maybe a limiting belief that you have. So whatever it is, it's always to help you get that bigger perspective. And that's the inter actually an interesting thing about past life regression, because a lot of people say, yeah, but past life regression, my life right now is already, you know, a lot to deal with. Why do I ne also need to go into past lives? The thing with past life regression is that it, whatever life shows up, it is always in direct relation to your life right now. And it is always to help you teach you something or make you understand something to help your life right now. So it's mm -hmm. not just, oh, interesting, a past life. It's really a tool for your higher self to get a certain message or a certain teaching across. And I love and experienced that when there's this discernment from your higher self, not only does it know which life, it's not random like this life where I was being beheaded during the Inquisition. Oh, <laughs> God. No, but, but in proportion to what you need. Like I did experience the final moments of another incarnation right. through what you took us through. Uh, took us through and it was just so beautiful even though there were some startling circumstances i'll share that a little later um really startling circumstances but it was just so beautiful and so you're not given something you can't handle mm -hmm. your higher self knows what you can handle exactly. um, knows what experience the depth of the experience and and all the there was no pain for me there was no you know all the peripheral stuff that would otherwise distract you from the the the, the impact of what's being relayed is is kept at bay. So uh, it was very fascinating. I never ever heard of it from that angle, and I'm glad you're in on that scoop, mm -hmm. Mariah. What's one of the most interesting experiences you've had, either experiencing a past or future life of yourself or a client of yours, like something that you could share that was kind of um, uh, eye opening or eye popping. Yeah, so eye opening and eye popping help. It happens all the time. It happens also for my own personal regressions, but also the clients uh, that I, I guide through these experiences. And the beauty when I when I think about my own regressions, you can see that there's a, a development within these regressions because the regressions that I, or the past lives that I visited in the very beginning of my spiritual path uh, are different than the ones that I now experience because I. You know, I have expanded, I have grown, I have developed in a different way. And therefore, now I can handle also a diff different level of information coming from these past lives. If some of the past lives that I've seen most recent would have happened in the very beginning, it might have been a little bit too much for me to deal with. Um, so, yeah, there's one past life that comes to mind when I talk about my own, uh, which is really the most recent one that I underwent which is a very interesting past life because this is a past life where I was on earth and I experienced myself as an old, uh, old man, kind of wizard like man living in the forest. And in first glance, there was nothing too strange about this life, but the things turned at the end of the life, which really all of a sudden <laughs> made quite of an impression. So it was an old man and he was very connected or I was very connected to nature, uh, also into uh, actually psychic activities as well, the, into connectedness of nature and humans. And I lived next to a community a little bit further out in the forest. And the people of the community thought I was some weird old guy, kind of Gandalf looking chap. Uh, but the kids, not, uh, nevertheless, were quite interested. So kids would often come to me and I would teach them things and I would show them things and I would tell them about, uh, yeah, the, the divine world, about the other, other side, all the different things. And then the regressionist took me to a day later in that life, to an important event later on. And this is when something happened that I did not foresee. <laughs> Because I recognized that the people in the village were starting to get upset. And they got upset. They started to riot because they realized that over the decades, I never aged. I stayed the same age, the same very old man that never seemed to progress in time. Wow. So what happened then is the, the riot came to my door. And all of a sudden, I saw what my true shape was because I took the shape of a human but I was actually a blue uh, extraterrestrial being 
uh, that was helping you know people on earth uh yeah to expand their awareness and for me that was quite expanding as well because yeah it just made really a lot of things fall into place and all of a sudden it's like holy shit i was you know i just took on i shapeshifted into a whole different uh, physique to make contact and to help uh and teach wow but it was not actually yeah what was so when when the riot came to your door, did you open it as a blue alien? No, I think even for them, they didn't. Have. I'm not sure if they could see it. I think I actually left the body uh, before because I did. The body was physical, but I left it, and I, I went into another. I went. I went away. I didn't see oh, the God. the actual the meeting. Oh my! You didn't ascend <laughs> it and take it with you. You just <laughs> exactly. let it drop. Yeah, like that's it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that would give them closure. They'll... Right. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd, they'd be haunted forever. Well, that was a good of you. Uh, yeah. Wow, that is such a cool story. And it jives very much with some of the folks I've been talking to and reading from about the fact that we have brothers and sisters mm -hmm. scattered throughout the cosmos. Um, oh, yeah. Literally spiritual brothers and sisters. There's nothing else. We're all we're all yeah. of God, by God, pure God. We're gonna go there in a little while. But okay. any other story come to mind that that is as interesting as that one of a client or yourself? So many, so many. <laughs> like like for me, really, usually the extraterrestrial lives in the very beginning of my spiritual path. I thought, oh my God, aliens. That's really too much for me to deal with. But obviously, now you seem that. Oh, okay, no, actually, I've also been extraterrestrial, also living on other planets, living on this planet. And so for me, I would say almost a third of my regressions now are extraterrestrial lives. And for me, these are super fascinating because they're really quite different than, yeah, than what we live like here. Um, so it's a very common thing for clients to come to me and they say, yeah, I don't know. I don't really feel I fit here somehow. I don't really feel at home. And they really don't know where they do feel at home. But they just say, I don't think I fit here. And I don't understand why there's so much violence and so much hate in this world. And then I'm already thinking, oh, maybe they're not really from here. And then, yes, they see a life that they're actually not. What a really fascinating thing, what I always love is that when one story is being told and then the next regression feeds upon that story, like they're somehow interconnected. So I had something quite recently where I had two regressions, maybe four weeks apart. And in the first regression, uh, it was a lady who was an extraterrestrial being. Uh, quite yeah, high up in the ranks, even though hierarchy is not the same as it is here, but she was really quite a special uh, spirit. She was non-physical, but she was a scout for planets to see what planets could actually potentially hold plant life, mineral life. So she would become a physical being and then physically also travel through these different planets, put her hands on the planet and make contact because of course planet Earth has a consciousness, consciousness of herself. And then would read uh, what was necessary for plants to come into, into life. And then when she would get this download, she would then delegate this to the teams uh, following up. And it would start with plant life uh, and mineral life. And then eventually also animal life would come. So this was very beautiful because then four weeks later, I get a client uh, on a really massive spaceship with all the, all the animal life that you can think of. And she would come to this planet Earth and she would read what animals would be appropriate for what time. And she would not just bring the animals there, seed them there, but she also would uh, keep an eye on the development of them and recognize, okay, this, these animals now need to get upgraded. These animals now are done here. It was really the whole, the whole works. And one thing to take it even one step further to make it a little bit more mind bubbling. I remember with this uh, with this client, uh, she was yeah this extraterrestrial being. Um, her extraterrestrial life is happening parallel to this incarnation, because the life here is very slow. So on the spaceship, they still think that she is focused there, but she shoot out a part of her consciousness to be born into Earth to help Earth from this side, because she recognized that she has to be physically here to help emit this special energy that she has wow. but her extraterrestrial life hasn't ended it's parallel to this one <laughs> yeah wow, just to give you a little hint a... of all the amazing things that can happen 
That is sensational. And I don't want anybody to think that this is all that this is about. But if you're like me, that really adds to um, the intrigue and the fascination and kind of confirming or augmenting this, that whole realm. What comes to mind is a book that I co-wrote with Tracy Farquhar, who Mm -hmm. channeled Frank. Frank is a collective of eight beings from planet Prohoshka. I said, Frank, what is it like? I mean, what do you guys look like and what are your lives like? And this answer kind of sums up everything I wanted to relay right now. Uh, Mike, uh, we are unimaginably different Mm. than you, which is kind of like, I was afraid to ask. And our lives are unimaginably um, different than your lives. Mm. However, when it comes to spiritual lessons, which is what we're all here for in in the multi-universe, our lives are virtually identical to yours. Ah, so while the appearance or the spaceship or the technology or the skin yeah. color or the lack of skin or the feathers might be unimaginably different, which really gave me pause. Like I didn't even, like, I was like, I don't even want to know what he looks yeah, like. Yeah. It might just freak me out. But it's all about love. It's yeah. all about cooperation, patience, yeah. respect, following your heart. Yeah. That's what compassion the adventures of in the jungles of time and space are all about compassion and it's like so yeah. so those are some sensational stories how about some down to earth stories <laughs> like, uh, like, yeah uh, yeah well. fair enough so i mean my, my very first regression like i remember uh i was in canada i heard this voice i heard about dolores but before i jumped in there i'm like well i need to have uh, an experience first so dolores trains a lot of uh you know uh, people through her programs and so i went and and underwent my very first experience and my question was like why canada like why am i here it doesn't why, it doesn't make sense to me and so uh then i saw a life in the exact region, uh, of course, where I was in Canada, around Calgary. It was a native life, and it was a very spiritual life. And I, this was actually really interesting. I was a twisted hare, which was a part, a part of a tribe that would travel from tribe to tribe and keep the spiritual teachings, keep the myths, the, the storytelling alive, uh, also played out with uh, using masks, for instance. Uh, we would channel our, our uh, animal uh, totems together. I saw a lot wow. of beautiful things. One of the things that was really fascinating, too, was that most of the communication was actually telepathic. The mouth was not used so much. It was really just by looking at each other and transmitting, uh, yeah, and transmitting feelings, transmitting information to each other. And uh, the question to the higher self was, yeah, why Canada? And the higher self said, well, you had to pick up your spiritual stones again. And you had to be physically in Canada for the spiritual stones to come back into your life. So as soon as you were back in Canada, uh, you had this restlessness feeling of like, I'm supposed to be learning something. And it's coming uh, from literally being back in that place. Wow. And the stones were maybe metaphoric. It's about your spiritual nature. Oh, my gosh. That is so wild. And... And life took care of you. It put you where you needed to be. You didn't have to oh, really? figure like, oh, where, where am I supposed to go? You're, you're, you're there. Oh, you're already there. Completely hold. And and the beauty was too because you know when you're new to it, even if you're undergoing it, still you you constantly want to have proof, right? And I remember something really crazy happened because the next week I had a conference, like an art uh, conference, and I was sitting next to a lady and I started talking to her. She was a painter. And she's like, yeah, but I'm actually really uh, quite fascinated with the uh, with the native Canadians, and I study them. I'm like, oh, cool. And and she's like, yeah, but it's quite specific because I actually only really like twisted hairs. She's like, you probably never heard of this. And I'm like, well, actually. <laughs> so then it was really amazing because she could tell me and I could tell her, and it was completely one on one. So you, in the beginning of your your journey, you kind of need this confirmation and this uh, this right. kind of amazing synchronicities to really make sure that you're going into the direction that your higher self has intended for you, which for me really worked. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's so cool. I was going to say, what are twisted hairs? Um, but yeah. I kind of assumed that they must be a, you know, a, a, a indigenous gathering or 
So they a really, twisted hair they is really an appointed exist. figure. Yeah, it's an appointed figure. And it's called a twisted hair because it goes from mm -hmm. tribe to tribe. And when it goes to a tribe, it's, uh, it's, it's meeting with the elders. And the elders share their stories for the twisted hair to then take and, and bring to the other tribes. When they share a story, they take a hair and put it around the wrist of the twisted hair. Oh, my gosh. That's so cool. Beautiful, eh? Yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, what about... Um, plain everyday folks and i'm going to go back to some of this yes. wild stuff yes. in a moment. Yes. but like uh, are there recurring themes and recurring lessons and recurring issues or recurring blocks uh, self-esteem uh mm -hmm. scarcity thinking uh illness sure. like is sure. there is there like a thing you see all the time um amongst your clients not necessarily all the time. Uh, well, well, there's one big one. Uh, one of the biggest one is that your higher self wants you to know, to trust your intuition. So sometimes it will show a person a life uh, where you did trust your intuition and look what happened. Or it shows a life where you didn't trust your intuition and look what happened. You know, trust your intuition is often such a big message. Also in the one-on-one -on -one session when the client it's a regression, but the, after that, they channel their own higher self. So then I actually have a conversation with my client's higher self. I'm not channeling them. The client is channeling their own higher self. So then I get to ask all the questions around these past lives that are being shown, around the big life questions that a person have about their own life, life purpose. Why am I here? Why am I born to these crazy parents? <laughs> Whatever it might have been. Um, but trust your intuition is a message that keeps on coming back because obviously in the culture that we've grown up in, trusting your intuition is not necessarily something uh, that is the norm. You know, the norm is usually, yeah, uh, yeah, make decisions based on your ratio, make decision based on the pro and con list. Whereas the higher self says, listen, uh, the head was really not made uh, to create, uh, to make decisions with. It's, it's simply not made Correct. for that. So Correct. it's really not the tool for you to look at. When you do have to make bigger decisions in life, you have to trust your intuition. So oftentimes it will show lifetimes uh, and those can be very mundane lifetimes. They can be very spectacular lifetimes. That doesn't really matter to the higher self. It doesn't necessarily show you a life, uh, you know, with, with grandeur or spectacle uh, just to have you uh, feel good about yourself. Some of these lives are are super mundane. Dolores call, uh, calls them uh, digging potatoes lives. Of course, most of us, had a lot of digging potatoes lives, but the things were happening. We created different dynamics. We're going through big life lessons. We're going through big uh, human experiences uh, for us to help us grow and learn. Uh, yeah. Through mm. these different uh, kind of perspectives. So yeah, trusting mm. the intuition is a really big one for sure. Even hearing that now, I'm like, yes, Mike, trust your intuition. <laughs> so Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, when you said that you often have a communication with a client's higher self. Every um, session, one-on-one -on -one sessions. This is what, uh, that's, that's a part of the session. Well, I was going to ask, um, what is the typical session? Like I know having mm -hmm. a, a long distance remote session with a group yeah. with you, um, yeah. it was pretty spellbinding. But mm -hmm. do some people just go out cold and they start channeling uh, or, or is that very rare? I mean, for me, uh, and I'll share this story in a minute, but I was very uh, aware of my surroundings. Right. Yeah. I laid down on the floor, found a pillow. I could hear you talking. I could feel, you know, my, my physical self present. But yeah. at the same time, I was just aware yeah. um, of uh, what I was walked through. So mm -hmm. no, that's a really that, good question. Yeah. How does it go for people? It's a really good question because it has changed over the course of the last 10, 15 years. So when uh, people listen to Dolores Cannon, Dolores passed away in 2014, uh, although her teachings are still alive and her daughter, uh, Julia Cannon, also keeps the QHHT uh, yeah, ac Academy alive. Um, most of Dolores, her work was done of course, uh, yeah, before she passed away and even before that time, she was a regressionist, I think, for almost 40 or 50 years. And when Dolores describes regressions, people do go out stone cold. Uh, but that has completely changed and that has changed worldwide. Everywhere in the world, all regressionists know this. 
Uh, and it's actually a very beautiful development because what is happening is that the frequency of Earth has been rising. Mm -hmm. And with it, also the frequency of us humans mm -hmm. have been rising. Our consciousness is getting wow. more and more expanded. And wherever you are in the world, you can probably recognize that more and more people around you are tuning into, you know, spirituality or more and more people are, you know, into personal development or whatever it is. But this is all because of these frequencies that are rising. So in a regression, that means that nowadays, when a, when a person goes into a regression, their consciousness is big enough to be in two places at the same time. So they are still aware of where they are. They can still, even if they want to filter what they're saying, they can go to the toilet and come back and just pick up where they left off, yet also experience this past life, yet also experience the voice of their higher self coming through. And I think it's actually very exciting because imagine, uh, Mike, maybe 10 years from now, five years from now, we don't need regressionists anymore. You know, maybe there's just this level of awareness of our past lives and of our that. life purpose and of what we're here to do, really. So I think it's super exciting. What happens wow. when this frequency is rising is that also, yeah, we the access to these past lives are really just around the corner. It doesn't take much. You don't have to go very deep for you to be able to reach this. And therefore, I also always say everybody can do this because honestly, it's right there. It's not very far. Yeah. Wow. And the beauty of it as well, what I also really like about this development is that it's also easier for people to integrate its teachings. It's not so separate from them. They, Of course, I make a recording. People listen to the recording. But still, if you were still somewhat there, it's a little bit easier to process what has happened and hopefully also to acknowledge and act on uh, the lessons and the learnings from the experience. Wow. Yes. I mean, I can't imagine 50 years ago, most people would have thought that they're sinners if they even indulged in this and you're the yeah. devil <laughs> and you got then you got to try to assimilate what you learn from the devil, good idea? I don't think so. Um, so yeah, everything's so different in all that you said, again, correlates to all that I'm hearing and finding myself in, in this world of rapidly rising energies. Yeah. You said we intuition is a big lesson, a big reminder. Um, yeah. What are the next two, for example? Like what are other two recurring lessons or realizations or encouragements that that your clients, if you can categorize it like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's hard to categorize. Ultimately, the biggest thing, and I think this is also the reason for reincarnation in general, is for people to realize that they come from unconditional love and the journey that we're undergoing now from lifetime through lifetime, to all this experience, from all these different perspectives, is ultimately to also become back and whole into this unconditional love so we're learning through this crazy duality that we're in to go back and open our hearts more and more and allow ourselves to forgive and release things surrender to things to get back into this state of compassion and, and unconditional love because essentially wow. that is who we are so that is such a beautiful thing and sometimes yeah. a person doesn't just go to a past life they go straight to back with being with source or with God or all that is, however you want to call it. But this is not an uncommon thing that people all of a sudden I guide them and they go into the regression and all of a sudden, you know, tears start rolling and they're like, I'm home, I'm home. And then they say, everybody's here. And it's, it's just love. Everything is here. And it's so, it's so amazing for people oh. to go through this experience. And it's always, I'm sitting there next to them completely in goosebumps because I'm also feeling the intensity of this experience that they're going through. But yeah, imagine that. And then coming out of wow. that and being like, yeah, you know, I'm not this body. I'm not just this, this specific life. I am much, much bigger, much abstracter, much more whole. Oh, and all of us are. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Oh, my mm. gosh. Hey, everybody, I still got uh, some questions to ask, but we're going to be taking your questions, too. Many of you already submitted questions, and we've got them lined up. If a question comes to mind right now, you can put it in the chat area. Um, so just hang tight. We're going to get to your questions as well. Uh, Mariah, here's a question. I, I've yeah. often heard of people, um, I don't think it's fair to say spontaneous healing, but when it comes to energy or blockages or unknown yeah. phobias uh, being corrected or balanced through hypnosis, can you uh, through past life regression? Can you 
speak to that? Is that something you've experienced? Do people do people find such um, therapy, if you will, from regression? Yeah. Yeah, and this is actually a very big part of a regression. Is it's the healing part, uh, and it can and healing takes takes place in in a couple different levels actually. Also in the group uh, regression, that this takes place. So what is a very fascinating thing uh, that if in this life we have uh, either a fear or a limiting belief about ourselves, um, and we don't really have proof of where that comes from. There's no logical explanation why there is this dreadful fear around fire or around water or around making money, you know, whatever it is. And then when a person all of a sudden sees the past life uh, where they were burned in the fire, very fascinating things can happen. Like literally, if you all of a sudden see like, oh my God, yeah, I, I, I died in the fire. And then when the realization comes, maybe this was a person who ha has uh, lung problems or has been has had uh, asthma, asthmatic. Do I pronounce that right? Yes, you did. Usually uh, within days, sometimes weeks, sometimes moments, that whole ailment just goes away. Because all of a sudden it's become a logical thing and the body and the subconscious mind recognizes, oh, wait a second, this has nothing to do with this life. And then it's just gone. So this happens a lot that all of a sudden when a fear or a limiting belief is explained or, or a disease even is explained that it loses all power over you. All, all, yeah, all power over you. And it just uh, is released. Uh, but it also happens, for instance, that people I had this actually recently. Um, it also happens that in a past life, you've perhaps taken vows or promises or made oaths. Uh, it's very common, for instance, that people uh, took a vow of poverty or vowed that they would never have possessions anymore oh because God. they were a monk or a priest or anything like this. Uh, these vows can be really quite uh, strongly still driven in you right now. But as soon again, as you recognize, hey, this has nothing to do with this life, it just disappears. It just dissipates. And so that's that's a big part of it. In a one-on-one -on -one regression, I also ask the higher self. I always ask the higher self, hey, can you make a body scan? And when the higher self does the body scan, it's energetically, physically, spiritually, physically, all the levels are being scanned. Uh, and it will it will tell things, hey, there's a, uh, and it often speaks symbolic, like, oh, there's a, a, a big uh, iron gate in front of their heart and it's blocking any love towards the self or towards others. And I'm like, okay, and is this from this life or is it from a past life? And then we dive into it in this way. So still also in a one-on-one -on -one regression, sometimes intense things come up, but then it's in dialogue with the higher self. And then sometimes I ask the higher self, why didn't you show this past life if this is still influencing their heart right now? And then the higher self simply says, they don't have to relive it uh, for us to release it. Interesting things that the higher self often talks in we. <laughs> because it sees itself oh, wow. in oneness with all. Wow, this is so yeah. encouraging and exciting. Um, mm -hmm. Other planet, other civilizations, and then other planetary. You've already spoken to, but Atlantis, Lemuria, Mu. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Does that show up sometimes? For sure. Yeah, I would almost say it's it's a little bit common. I had a very big group aggression in uh, Greece uh, this last summer. And uh, there was a little Atlantean group because there was one person that said, hey, I was in Atlantis. Was anybody else there? And then they got together and started talking to each other. Uh, yeah, for sure. All these things happen. And also in ancient civilizations that are not even alive anymore now. And I really, I really uh, appreciate and, and love for people to go through these experiences because you get to know their customs and the way how they dealt with life and dealt with death, for instance, as well, that is yeah, so inspiring. Like it's really beautiful, for instance, uh, in very old civilizations or also tribal civilizations. Uh, yeah, death is seen as something completely different as, as what we, in, in, you know, the average person nowadays sees it. And mm. usually it's, it's actually very much welcomed. And it's just okay for a person to, to decide, I'm going to stop eating right now and I'm going to lay under a tree in the forest. That's it. And everyone's like, yeah, sounds good. They still do that in some places on Earth. Yeah, I'm sure. 
One of the very beautiful things, this is a custom that I wish that comes back in our society. I remember this was a also a tribe and the man was dying. And uh, as people recognized that he was slowly uh, leaving his body, the whole tribe started to surround, uh, surrender uh, or surround him, surrender him, surrender around him. Surround. Surround him. And they started uh, humming and they started singing in a rhythm. And this would go on day and night up until the moment he was uh, actually passed into the light. Because they would see when he was be passing in the light. And the person that I was regressing was the person dying. So he said, okay, I'm dying. They're humming. And the sound of their humming is lifting me into the light. And as he was already very far in, back into the light on the other side, he still felt that he was being carried by this beautiful humming that this whole tribe was doing. So they kept on doing it until he was really completely uh, through the light, cord, this, the silver cord was shed. And I thought, wow, isn't that the most amazing thing? Like, I wish that we could bring that back nowadays. Wow. Well, so that's, I would call an advanced civilization, yeah. <clears throat> which we tend to assume will be in the future. Mm. But uh, advanced or primitive folks go to the future as well, right? And they report sure. back. For sure. And this is actually something I do in my group regressions uh, that I take people far into the future, either 100, 200 or 300 years into the future. And it's a super fascinating things because... As you might know, too, there's different parallel universes that you can tap into. So there's different uh, there's different things that people can see when they go 200 years into the future on planet Earth. But oftentimes they also go into the exact same place. And then they describe, for instance, on planet Earth, this whole new style of houses, houses that have really plants ingrown into them and water systems that are completely uh, yeah, in an organic way, living through the houses and rooms that can have multi-functional uh, uh, yeah, options. Like you, one day it's your bedroom, then it becomes the bathroom, then it becomes a meeting space for others that are coming by. Like it's all these really interesting uh, technical advancements. And I actually once had a, our architect in my group regression who also saw these houses and she was like, Oh my god oh my god i have to i have to do something with this i'm like yeah, well yeah amazing. this is actually a perfect way to develop <laughs> could be your, a profitable your adventure um yeah you could find out what the next hula hoop is going to be or <laughs> yeah. should, we, should we be buying bitcoin right now <laughs> <laughs> how's the disney stock doing in 200 years uh, right right uh do you ever get people go to highly evolved societies like Neil yeah. Donald Walsh speaks of highly evolved civilizations where, you know, the, the vibrations have risen and maybe mm -hmm. their fifth density to, to put it in that terminology where, where really love is the rule and there's total cooperation yeah. and, and maybe activated certain latent biological features that I do believe we all have for bilocation, mm. teleportation, levitation, telekinesis, clairvoyancies, all the clairs. Do you ever yeah. go to like, uh, or, or know of anybody who's gone to a place where everyone's just kind of like, you know, vibrating really high that life yeah. is like almost unrecognizable? Yeah. And sometimes also in very different uh, forms, kind of like you said uh, with the channeled materials that uh, you were in touch with. Also, some of them really are in very different uh, shape and form. And also I've seen these lives. And when people touch into those lives, those are often simultaneous to this life. So that's, that's a very interesting thing because they are on such a different frequency then they can split off a part of their consciousness and experience this very low dense frequency on planet earth in the 3d dimension uh, oh. while they are still in the very high dimension. And what they describe is always, yeah, just this ma magical, beautiful places that are completely in harmony with, with each other, with nature, with the environment. It's, it's very, very, very beautiful. And these are often also then the clients that come here and they say, yeah, but why is it so violent on this earth? Like, I don't, I, I don't understand it here. Like what's going on, you know? And then they see, oh, actually uh, my norm is quite different than what it is here. But the thing is that it, this is something that I actually really appreciate uh, about past life regression. 
sometimes they feel like, what am I doing here? Like, I don't fit in here. I don't jive with this place. But as soon as they do a regression, uh, they find out, no, you chose to come into this incarnation to also help planet Earth raise its frequencies from the inside out. So there's a lot of extraterrestrial wow. souls from these very high uh, evolved places that have chosen to incarnate. Uh, Dolores Cannon calls these the volunteers. She also wrote an amazing book on this, The Three Waves of Volunteers. Um, and yeah, to help incarnate. And they usually don't have to do much on Earth. They don't, they, they don't have a mission. They are just antennas for this high frequency to also be grounded here on Earth. And so this is a story that keeps coming back and back and back. Uh, and it's, it's, it's really fascinating. It's really beautiful. And often for a person, yeah, it, it really shifts uh, them into having peace with being in this violent place or with being in this dense, uh, challenging planet, uh, but that they are already doing simply by being. Oh, that's so beautiful and very powerful. And uh, mm -hmm. I know of that. I have that book. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, what can you tell us from your many experiences? You've already been quite enlightening about what is the world going through? What is planet Earth 2023 going through right now that we see this divisiveness and this bitterness and uh, estranged polarities and the, the, mm. the best of the best and the worst of the worst. Uh, mm. How would you, how would you summarize that based on your experience with clients and your, your knowledge? Yeah. So, so what comes out of my sessions also Dolores writes about this as well. Uh, it's in the same book, three waves of volunteers. The last part of the book is called uh, the new earth. So Dolores describes it as the new earth. So she says uh, that there's going to be an old earth and there's going to be a new earth because the new earth is ascending to the fifth dimension. It's quickening, it's speeding up, it's raising its frequency. And the interesting thing is that as soon as you uh, align yourself to this frequency, as soon as you choose love, as soon as you choose uh, to be empowered and not a victim, as soon as you... You know, take the challenge instead of thinking that things are, are a problem. Uh, as soon as you release all resistance to change, you are moving. You already are in the new earth. This has been happening already for a decade, if not longer. And the interesting thing is, though, that there is a split happening. So there are going to be two different versions of earth, the old and the new one. And this is something that what comes out of my regressions is completely new, that has never happened. There has been societies, there has been tribes, there has been, of course, singular people that have made this ascension while being in the physical, but never before a whole planet. So something that is really interesting that I've heard, especially also from extraterrestrial regressions, is that kind of the extraterrestrial communities are almost watching the earth kind of as a, as a big, a big brother theater show of like, what's going to happen? Like what, what is, what is going, what is this earth going, going to go through? How is it going to affect the people? Um, and yeah, they don't really know what it's going to look like, but they do always assure that if you, make the changes that you feel like making. It could be in your diet, it could be in your lifestyle, it could be in your outlook on life. If you choose fear over love in whatever situation you're in, you are already in the new earth. There's nothing to worry about. No, There's love no... over fear, love over mm -hmm. fear. Mm -hmm. Choose love yeah. over fear. Yeah, constantly, constantly. Where is this coming from? Is it? Is it? Am I motivated by fear? Am I motivated by love? Like it's. it's really, we're going through a time now where polarity seems to be have, have risen because we're all being pointed out in this choice. What are you going to choose? So just to kind of muse on the side here, I, I mm -hmm. almost gather from some of the deeper stuff I've read, honestly, mm -hmm. I don't think I could go there on my own, that there will be this kind of split, like I mean, a literal split, like, mm -hmm. like, there will be people, <clears throat> there'll be two versions of earth and mm -hmm. you will be on the one that most resonates with you. Yeah. Um, from what I gather, speaking to a few channels, they, they, they say, you know, it's not like people are going to just disappear. Um, you know, you'll think life went on and I guess there'll be uh, placeholders for your loved ones or, and it'll feel like it's still them. Mm. Um, and, uh, and you'll be, focused on the on the version of the world that that you're in resonance with fear yeah. or love is is you were kind of saying that like we don't know what we're gonna 
yeah. see? I mean, is this the rapture? Yeah. Um, it sounds like it is, but it might not physically play out in terms of a rapture or Armageddon. But And, and, and for some parallel uh, versions, for one of the split versions, it might be more physical as well. Because that, that's also something that sometimes it says, yeah, no, for, for some, there is going to be a lot of rapture and there is going to be a lot of, uh, you know, changes, earth changes. And, you know, as long as you just keep staying centered and as long as you keep grounded and trust that it's all for the right, it's all happening for a good reason, uh, then you can really be a bringer of light in these situations. Mm. Well, the interesting everybody... thing is, though, that what, what, what comes out again and again also is that a lot of souls want to incarnate at this time. A lot of souls want to be here like firsthand, not knowing what's going to happen, but wanting to be a part of it. So you and I and everybody's watching right now, we're pretty lucky to be able to have this grandiose experiment uh, and be literally at the mercy of it. Oh, my gosh. We are on the razor's <laughs> edge of reality creation. Exactly. In a single lifetime, we have the option of moving from the darkness into the light. Like, yeah. Oh, for where it will stay for untold millennia. Every day millennia. you can choose. And there are some ascension uh, symptoms as well. Uh, one of the things that keeps coming back is, for instance, ringing in the ears. If you have ringing in the ears, don't be too alarmed. It's not oh, necessarily <laughs> a bad thing. It's just, a, it's just a, a different attunement, a different frequency that you are setting yourself to. It might be that certain foods you don't feel really gravitated to eat anymore, like denser food, heavy food, fried foods. You know, these things are helpful to become more to a liquid diet or more to a fruit diet or yeah, take a little bit better care of your health. Like these are all little signs uh, that you're actually going in the right direction, that you're actually moving with the new earth. We're about to shift to our audience questions, but I've got a couple more here. One yeah. is uh, something that I've heard referred to as family constellations. I don't know if that's a known buzzword, but the idea is that families re often, there's certainly no law or fixed rigidity, but often reincarnate together. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess they learn well together or they play well together. Can you, have you experienced or witnessed that through your clients? Are you aware of that? Is it true? 100%. Yeah, 100%. And families, I would I would uh, reword it to soul family. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, your blood family in this world right now. Uh, the soul family can also be, you know, your neighbor, it could be your boss, it could be your next partner, your ex-partner, whatever, your child. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily relate just to blood family. But yes, so the, the, the main thing is that uh, the people that we're closest with uh, right now are the people that can also really call us out on what's happening with us. You know, they're really there to stimulate our growth, either through joy or pain. But they're the ones that either are supporting us. They're the ones that, you know, uh, letting us face with the things that we have to improve on. They're the ones that makes us uh, move and grow the fastest. And of course, these relationships, these dynamics that you have with these people close to you, they have been here already for a long time. They didn't just originate in this lifetime. You already have created this dynamic and different roles that you've played with them throughout your different lives because every time when you come back and you would start completely with a whole new set of people there wouldn't be so much push and pull there wouldn't be so much uneasiness or so much challenge or so much friction friction all these things are essentially really there to help you move and grow and evolve into the next level of yourself the interesting thing is also that what i've seen happen often is that with our blood family in our current lifetime or our, our care or main caretakers, whatever it is. What is very common is that you incarnate back with somebody in your family that actually um, perhaps you have killed or the other way around or have had a really tough relationship with. And then I always ask the higher self, like, hey, why is it that uh, we incarnate back with these people that we have such a tough uh, relationship with? And then the higher self, and this is why I want to share it because it says the same thing over and over. It says, sure, you could have hated hate them in the past and you have but now you're family so now you have to learn to love each other so the whole point is always to come back and again open your heart for this person mm -hmm. open your heart have compassion for the choices they have made or you have made and just constantly come into an unfolding of understanding for each other 
Oh my gosh. So well said. Everything you've said just resonates. And uh, I can share with everyone uh, my experience with Mariah that gave me the supreme confidence to host her in this uh, broadcast and to actually, I'll tell you about it in a moment, host uh, something that you might choose to sign up for. We're going to do a 14-day past life regression adventure at tut.com. But let me share with you the experience that I personally had when Mariah, while in Berlin, put me and uh, about five others on our team, uh, none of us in the same room, all done remotely into a, a regression. It was so amazing. Shall I dive into that, Mariah, and share? Go ahead, yeah. I'm not even sure, Mike, we went over your story, so I'm kind of curious to hear it myself. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, yeah. You couldn't shut me up, remember? No, it wasn't you, but I, I couldn't shut myself up. I was just like, <laughs> I want to tell my story. It was so amazing because, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, a person that goes into zones or trances or anything. And so I had the, the normal kind of like, you know, I hope this works for me. I hope I get something. And it was just like we're talking now, but you guided us. You, you know, you've developed this um, art and uh, we were to lay down on our backs or lay down comfortably or get comfortable. I laid down on the floor mm -hmm. and um, you asked our higher self to take us to a lifetime that would have uh, Im uh, importance to this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I was um, like in the Knights Templar and I'm not trying to be like, you know, oh, isn't that cool? It was probably a, mostly I was picking tomatoes or potatoes but I happened to be a warrior and my whole life was king and cause. I was like, I ate, slept and breathed for the king. And, and I say the king, I don't know what the cause was. I don't know if it was a religion or what, but I was a soldier and I was going to lay down my life. And I was in the battlefields and I was risking it all because there was no higher calling. I could feel all of this. And my brother, Andy Dooley, was part of this, although I don't know what role he played, but but taking us to um, the last moments of this incarnation, I was on my back in the middle of the battlefield. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was Scotland because I recently visited it for the first time just last oh. year where I learned of all the wars and the clans and the bloodshed. I was just appalled. Mm -hmm. But I felt like I was in Scotland and I was looking up at the sky these mm -hmm. were my final moments in that lifetime. There, there was zero pain. There was zero sadness. There was just this ecstatic elation of kind of a release and acceptance. And I remember looking at the blue sky. And to this day, and this has only been six months later or whatever, when I look up and I see a blue sky, I'm just like, oh, my God. And there was white puffy clouds. And the blue was so beautiful. It mm -hmm. was like. I mean, it was just blue, a blue sky, but it just was so meaningful to me. Right. And essentially, I, I, I laid there as my life ebbed away. And very quickly, I got what my higher self wanted, that that life was a life of dedication and mm -hmm. a life of following. I was a follower. I was yeah. there for the king and nothing else mattered yet there are other ways to live a life. And mm -hmm. suddenly juxtaposed to this lifetime where mm -hmm. I am doing my best to be authentic, mm -hmm. uh, doing my best to be true to myself, yeah. sometimes struggling mightily to defer or infer the difference between intuition and logic. Because when you're a follower, you don't care. The king says, yeah, yeah. march and you march. Kill you don't think kill. twice or feel twice, yeah. And suddenly I was like, oh, that's why all this stuff and, and this very unusual life I live now and, you know, teacher, speaker, traveler for 20 years, entrepreneur for 35 years. It's like, oh, it was like it was so important this time to be so authentic and to not follow the herd. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with any path, but I could see oh. the juxtaposition. And, yeah, and yeah. it was really I mean, I, my eyes were all watering and, and, and the others in the team had a similar experience. And I was just laying there on the floor. I knew I was. But all of this came forward and brought such clarity to the person I am today and presumably right. the person I was, but with relevance to how to 
appreciate and embrace this life's choices. Yeah. It was so powerful. Beautiful. Um, and, and that's I, actually that's actually one of the things that maybe for, for me personally has been also one of the biggest takeaways of undergoing this is that you really become non-judgmental of other people's paths because you realize we're all choosing these different paths and we're all choosing it to just have these experiences, to have these different kind of perspectives and uh, to learn and to grow. And it's it's complete nonsense to even compare your path to somebody else or analyze somebody's choices in life. It's all, you know, it's all just neutral and it's all good. We, we've been all loved. these people. We're going to be all these people. It's mm -hmm, all good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it was so magical. And I thank you again. Um, mm -hmm. To make the announcement really clear, if you just scroll down, everybody watching live or recorded, if you scroll down just a few knobs on your mouse, you're going to see we are announcing that kicking off on October 11th, which is really soon, Mariah is going to be leading a 14-day past life regression adventure. It's an online course. It'll be at tut.com. I'll be riding along with you. I want to go back in time. I want to go back to the future. <laughs> I want to learn who I really am. I want to experience the ease once more of, of, of dipping into the rich resource of who I am in my entirety. And so yeah. for a price you choose and all those good bells and whistles we always uh, make available for tut online adventures, just below, you'll see all the info. Now, you don't need to go there right now. Which we're not taking that page down for a day or two, or I don't know when it's going to come down. But it does exist. And if you're um, curious and your fascination is piqued, then uh, please, we invite you to join us for a price you choose, money back guarantee, all that jazz. Um, <laughs> Mariah, I want to let other people ask questions. Is there anything you want to share right now before we do that? Yeah, I just want to say a little bit about the 14-day program. So it's going to be a yeah, 14-day program. Half of the program is going to be all around past life regression. We're going to do two life workshops around regression, where we're going to go into a past life, a future life. And then the other half is all going to be about how you can learn to trust your intuition. We're also going to channel your intuition. We're going to channel your higher self. We're going to attune yourself to your higher self. Um, and maybe you might ask to yourself, yeah, but can I also do this? You know, I don't know. Is it also for me? Honestly, this is really designed. I especially created this program uh, for Toot. It's designed for everybody to join. All you really need is simply a healthy dose of curiosity uh, and an open mind. Even if you say, yeah, I don't really know if I believe in reincarnation. I'm not too sure about these things. It doesn't matter. It, we all have access to it with curiosity and an open mind. Uh, you're going to get the whole experience. So, yeah, uh, that's really what I want to share with people who might think, yeah, but can I? If you have curiosity, it's probably your higher self that is giving you that spark of curiosity. And by the way, I told you I would chime in. We're approaching 20,000 people right now on this live broadcast. Amazing. So just if you're curious, there's a, a lot of curious folks out there and if you did this adventure with mariah and i which you can find by scrolling down on the, if you already clicked through to youtube you can't do that come back to our page scroll down and you'll see it if you found in the in the 14 days the three workshops that you like you know you got nothing which i can't imagine will happen but if that happened you could just send an email and you get a full refund so you got nothing to lose and a whole lot to gain so Team and behind the scenes, do we have some questions from the audience, please? Yes, bring it on. What if I cannot be hypnotized? Oh, yeah, this is a good question. This question comes up a lot, actually. Um, so, yeah, what if I can't be hypnotized? So the interesting thing with this kind of regression is that I am not necessarily hypnotizing you. Uh, you're going into a natural hypnotic trance yourself. And the beauty of this trance is that it will feel completely familiar to you because you're actually in this natural hypnotic trance every day of your life, uh, in and out of every day. So you're in it right before you're falling asleep. You're in it right before you're waking up, but you're also actually already in it when you're maybe watching your screen for longer than two or three minutes, or when you're reading a book, or when you're driving and kind of a little bit zoned out of where you were. 
all that this hypno hypnotic uh, trance, all that it really means, it's instead of having your awareness all around you, noticing different things happening around you, you have your focus and attention on one point. Really, hypnotism means uh, yeah, really a focused concentration. So when you close your eyes and you get the right guidance, uh, you can all of a sudden go into depth uh, and open doors that you didn't even know existed with really great ease. So if you sleep at night, uh, you go through a hypnotic state. So everybody can do this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question. Are past life species specific? For instance, humans reincarnate as humans, dogs as dogs, etc. Uh, yeah, that's also interesting because there's different levels of, uh, of of species that you're going through in your path of evolution. And so it's to, to give you an example, Dolores describes that you start as an elemental, uh, maybe as a mineral. I've had people that have seen past lives as trees, as mountains, uh, as areas in a field. All these different uh, ways are, are ways to incarnate for us. And you might think, oh, yeah, but a mountain never dies. It doesn't. It just switches souls for the soul to have a different experience. But you go through these different uh, different elemental experiences. Maybe you're a gas bubble somewhere in the sky. Then you're coming to plant life. Then you're going to small animal life. And then you keep on growing. I've had a client once ask, yeah, but can my next lifetime be that of a dog, for instance? And the higher self says, yeah, for sure. You can choose whatever you want. Your free will. But it's quite unlikely that you will make that choice because essentially you want to have experiences of bigger and bigger consciousness, not smaller and smaller consciousness. Um, so yeah, th definitely it can be that people have experiences of different species and this also happens. And it's fascinating because people would see the life of an eagle and they say, oh yeah, but my vision was completely different. Like I could all of a sudden see the colors were different. I could see much more uh, specific details very far away, you know, different kind of feelings, uh, how it feels to be in the body like that. Uh, so yeah, definitely anything can happen. Anything that your higher self deems to have a message for you. I think that's called transmigration. I'm, I'm not sure where the person might come back as a dog or an eagle. Seth, channeled by Jane Roberts, was like the granddaddy of channels and really profound and yep. said that while the oversoul can throw out a spark to be in a tree or an eagle or a mountain, mm -hmm. generally, this is one point of view, generally a person doesn't come back as something other than a person because once they're on that track in yeah. that theme park they, they've got people lessons to learn yeah. but they can have fragments he used the word fragments mm -hmm. um, lent out to taste the bounty of creation oh, yeah. in other ways yeah yeah beautiful uh next question do we bring physical reminders of past lives into our current future lives yeah, for sure. And I mean, you can check your body, uh, for instance, if there's any uh, birthmarks that you have. Birthmarks are very interesting because your cells can have memories of past lives. And usually what is interesting is that, I mean, if, if our body was showing all the memories of, of uh, past life trauma or physical trauma, it would be completely covered. But usually it only shows the trauma that still has something for you to learn or still has some lesson for you or still has something for you to figure out. So if you have perhaps a, a different kind of scar or a birthmark or a, a wine stain or, or special kind of moles, for instance, definitely these can relate to some story of your past life that wants to be told. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Next question. And by the way, scroll down below on the Tut page if you're interested in more details on the upcoming past life regression adventure with Mariah and myself. What if I was a very bad person in a past life? Yeah, very likely you have been. Very <sighs> likely I have been as well, because we don't just choose always to stay on, on the on the on the good side of life. There is really in in, in our duality. Uh, we experience good and bad, but really good and bad doesn't really exist. And so, of course, we are going through different roles, playing different characters, having different kind of experience. Quite likely, we've all been pretty shitty and lousy people as well to other people. 
not very likely that that will show up in a regression. I honestly have never seen this uh, because again, your higher self is really here to motivate you, to give you a bigger picture of your life, to stimulate you, to help you take that next step. So it's not very likely that that life uh, will show up in a regression. Very good. Next question. Can you tell how many lifetimes someone has experienced? How far back are we able to go? Yeah, this is something that I sometimes ask the higher self in one-on-one -on -one sessions. How many lifetimes has this person lived? How many times have they lived on Earth? How many times have they lived perhaps on other planets? Uh, for sure, this is something in, in a one-on-one -on -one session uh, you can ask. Uh, in a group regression, it might be something that you can ask at the end, but it might be a little bit harder to tap into. Uh, and this answer is also very different. Sometimes the answer is 10, 15 lives. Other times, like you said to Mike, thousands of lifetimes. Um, so it really varies very widely. And also because a lot of extraterrestrial beings, for instance, to think in our linear time, uh, they don't necessarily have to die, especially in those five dimensional beings. They don't have a life cycle like we do. They choose to die if they want to, uh, but you don't necessarily have to. So therefore their lifespan works very differently than ours. And we can choose that too, which we are about to find out in fifth density that, mm -hmm. that you can raise your vibrations and, you know, take it, take your body with you like Ramtha channeled by Jay-Z Knight and countless others have referenced. Uh, Mariah, if somebody wanted to work with you, what are their choices? Yeah, so the choices are one-on-one -on -one sessions, which actually take place in this space. I'm right now in my office in Berlin. My one-on-one -on -one sessions, uh, I use the technique from Dolores, which means that I only do them in person. But I also offer group regressions uh, that I designed myself, uh, like the one that we're going to do in the 14-day journey. These I offer both online and also in person. And then there's something else that I created, which is also part of the 14-day journey, which is the higher self uh, attunement, higher self channeling, where I really share all the different teachings that I have gained from the higher self through my clients, how to attune to the higher self frequency, and also, yeah, how to channel your own intuition. So, yeah, these are the different packages that I offer. Fantastic. And I, I was so struck by the one that you did for me and my team that that it was so effective um, remotely, long distance mm. and with a group and none of us yeah. were in the same room. Is Do you see that? Is that part of the trend? Um it's something really special. You know what it is? Like when people come together and together undergo an experience like this, there is something within the dynamic, no matter if you're remotely uh, connected or actually physically in the same room, somehow the group dynamic lifts each other up and makes it so much easier for people to have a very vivid experience because maybe you've had experience with uh, meditation. If you meditate on your own, uh, for sure, this can be a very beautiful experience. But when you meditate with other people, somehow there's something in this group dynamic that just make you flow. So this is a fascinating thing. And this is also why I'm super excited to do this together with you, because we can have a really uh, wonderful group of people that together mm -hmm. create this energy uh, to go into the other realms. Yeah. Well, I can vouch for the experience being wow. And uh, no doubt how many people will have. We have almost 20,000 for this. 10% uh, watch live. The rest watch the recording. But whenever there's that energy mm -hmm. with intention, yeah. time becomes uh, moot. And we're all no doing it at the same time. It's really something quite special. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Yeah. Bring them on. What if this is my very first incarnation, my yeah. first lifetime? Yeah, you wouldn't be in, in human form at the first go. Like <laughs> I said, there would be other other species that you've been before, other kind of uh, consciousness that you've went into before you come into a human incarnation. But uh, not remember, very likely that this one, especially not at this time that we're living in right now, this is a very special time. Uh, no, there's no way. <laughs> and with time being, um, you know, we think it's linear. That's how we experience yeah. it within the illusions. There is yeah, no yeah. real time. So all of our incarnations are happening simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So there would be a wealth of information for anybody to draw from. 
Yeah, and this is question. something we're going to get into in the future, uh, the future life regression. We're going to go into this whole uh, all time is happening at the same time uh, talk, which is I find very fascinating because I think our human brains are not fully meant to comprehend it, yet we can tap into it and with it also expand our view on these things again, uh, mm -hmm. which then also gives us a whole different view of our own reality. Next question. What if I don't see anything? Also a good question, because uh, when we do these exercises, when we do uh, group regressions, when I do one-on-one -on -one regressions, when I guide uh, groups, what happens is that 50% of the people have a very visual experience, never with the physical eyes, always with the mind's eye. 50% of the people, though, the other 50%, for them, it's more a sense of feeling or a sudden sense of knowing or spontaneous memories just being there. So really it might not be seeing. And sometimes when, um, and this is also, I always tell people have no expectations on how it's going to be. Even if you've had experience before, always have a beginner's mind because your higher self will use whatever medium, whatever channel is least restricted. So sometimes I have people that say, yeah, but I'm a very creative person. I always see things very, very strongly. I'm always saying, just pay attention to all your senses because this time it could come through more in the feeling. And there's pluses and cons for both, but your higher self chooses very wisely. So it might be feeling, it might be seeing, uh, whatever way most information is going to come to you. Both are equally valid. Yeah, it's the same. I get the question all the time from live audiences when I teach creative visualization. I and am. there's actually a, um, a condition that, that, that has a medical terminology for people, I think it's 15 or 20% of people. If I say, close your eyes and see, you know, you're driving in your dream car, they're like, it's just dark. I don't see anything. <laughs> and I don't mean to, to, uh, to make light of that, but mm -hmm. it is a known condition. And again, just as Mariah said, go to the feelings, go to the joy, go to the mm -hmm. euphoria, or in this experience, there'll be feelings you receive. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. All right. Uh, next question. What if I'm not too sure about reincarnation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a good question, too. And the interesting thing is my uh, my clients really vary very widely. I have people that are full believers, you know, have read Dolores Cannon, are familiar with, with Brian Weiss. And I have people that are completely new to it, but somehow landed on my website and somehow felt they should book a session, but really don't believe in reincarnation. Both these people can have the exact same session. All you need is this curiosity and an open mind, then you're totally fine. And what you do then with your belief about reincarnation is completely up to you. I'm not here to convince anybody uh, to, to believe this. The, the most important thing is for people really to follow their own, uh, their own gut feelings on this. Um, but it doesn't matter if you're not fully convinced about reincarnation or if you're fully convinced both people have the same access. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Do children respond to a past life regression differently than adults? Yeah, so within QHHD, no children allowed. Um, there's such a thing when a child is growing up, they have such something called a grace period. And a grace period means that a child who's growing up, and this can depend a little bit on the child, but it's somewhere set between maybe some children are seven, some are 12, mm -hmm. around this age, that all of a sudden their karma comes. And this is then for them to start dealing with uh, the memories of or the, the dynamics between them and other people, the dynamics of them with their life lesson, their life purpose. Before that time, they don't have to deal with it. And Dolores always has said uh, regressions under 18 are not a good idea because, uh, you know, it might not really be the motivation of the child to go into this. It's best to do that after 18. So therefore, mm. no children. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't work with children. Okay, great. Can people do their own past life regression, like in a state of meditation? Is that a common thing or...? Not very common. Um, I mean, with with a recording, with someone leading you, with someone guiding you, then yes. But to go there cold turkey yourself, not so much a thing. The interesting thing is, though, that what I've noticed with a lot of my clients that after they've done a regression, after they've done a group regression or one-on-one -on -one regression, 
is that they have uh, more receptiveness to past life memories. And it can be of that same life that they've seen in a regression, but it can oh. also be of memories from previous lifetimes. In a way, I think we all have uh, receptivity to past life memories and they can come up spontaneous. But when a person has gone through an experience of a regression themselves, they now really also trust this information. They recognize, hey, this is what that felt like. Oh, right. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sensing different things. I'm feeling things. And then sometimes with this acknowledgement, also they experience more and more things come up. Uh, but really, if you've never had f experience in it and to go cold turkey, yeah, like just by setting your intention, not so much, not so much, okay. unless maybe you're you're a very uh, psychic person. Okay. Everybody, yeah. again, scroll down on the page you're watching this if you're at the Tut website and you'll see all the details for the 14-day past life regression adventure that will be guided by Mariah. There'll be three workshops. Two of them are two hours each because we... She knows what she's doing, and that's what it takes. Um, also, there'll be a daily uh, five or ten minute video every day for two weeks that'll kind of hold your hand and, and get you going. Obviously, the daily the dailies uh, are pre recorded. Well, not obviously, but they will be pre recorded, and we will be recording the three workshops. So, if you sign up for the fourteen day adventure, which begins next week, begins soon. Um, whether or not you make the live programs, you will have lifetime access to the recordings on your dashboard. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Next question. Will I remember everything? Yes. So this is what I, what I said before, like when people back in the day, 20 years ago would do regression, usually they come out not remembering a thing. They have to listen to the recording to really understand what has happened. Uh, that is not no longer the case. Now people go into a regression, whether it be in a group or one-on-one, -on -one, they have this level of awareness that also allows them to yeah, remember, to integrate and to work with it uh, when they come out. Good, good. Do our personalities stay the same when we reincarnate? Hmm. Yeah, this is an interesting question. Good question. And the answer can vary a little bit. I mean, sometimes you see in a past life that it is very similar. Sometimes it is really different. And I've also asked the higher self questions about this. Like, hey, why is the personality now more this way? And then the higher self can explain, well, in this lifetime... Yes. Uh, you wanted to know what it was like to be whatever, very generous, or you wanted to know what it was like to have a lot of uh, jealousy, whatever it might have been. So you do play with different elements and you put different things to the mix for you to also, again, have to deal with different things, see things again from a different pr uh, perspective. But there is also such a thing as, you know, you are building up uh, something and you're learning things and the lessons and the perspectives that you've learned you they're all for always yours they're not uh, something that you shed it's really something that builds on top of each other but it could be that your personality changes around a little bit depending on the different characteristics that you are experimenting with mm -hmm. yeah next question can it be scary to do a past life regression what have you had what if you had some bad karma in previous lives yeah, so like I said, uh, not in this kind of regression. Uh, in this kind of regression, like I said, we leave it over to your higher self. Your higher self knows exactly what it wants to show you and it wants to empower you. It doesn't want to make you feel guilty or make you feel blocked or scare you in any way. Uh, so not for this kind of session. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can say that for my team and I, uh, everyone had um, a, a very touching beautiful recall um and you said if what if you had bad karma i karma is not quite what we think it is but all of us have had bad karma mm -hmm. so so no no fears there next question how do i recognize when someone is in my life from a previous incarnation and if we have karma to work out and heal um so that means in this life 
right? Yeah, Is that the yeah, question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you... right away there'll be a familiarity. And there can be, and this could be going two ways, actually. It could be that you see someone right away, you feel, oh, this is going to be my friend. Or right away you feel, oh, I'm going to take care of this person. Or right away you feel like, oh, I know this person already. I could talk to them for hours. But it can also be the other way around that you see someone you haven't even talked to the person and right away you're like oh no stay away from me i don't no 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 i don't want you close <laughs> the neck the neck hairs are standing up <laughs> very strong signs you know that you can be pretty sure that this is a reaction based on a previous experience that you've had with this person but the lesson always in the end is to come to a place of compassion and love for this person. And this is also why sometimes you're incarnating with these people in your family or in your close circles or, you know, wherever you might run into them might be your boss. Uh, but it's always to come to a place of neutrality and a place of love. Forgiveness. Yeah, that's what you have to work out. Just yeah. but love your emotions them will tell you. <laughs> Next question. Can you heal past life problems in a present time, in present time, in present time. So this is something the, the thing is that in a regression, you come to, you come to find out where the things come from. And within a regression, then you also recognize that it is separate from your current lifetime. And then it can also be shed. It can also be released uh, for you. So in the present time, you can, in my experience, through a regression. Of course, there's a lot of other uh, different tools that you can practice as well. Uh, for me, uh, the regression is the is the is the tool that I know most of. So definitely, you can uh, shed these problems. I think all of our incarnations have access to the database of our soul experiences. So yeah, you could, with enlightenment or wisdom gained in this lifetime, surely it will spill over and enrich all other lifetimes. Mm -hmm. um, but it might not be as profound or as specific as, you know, a, 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 a desire to actually visit a life where you're going to learn something to help you in this life. Maybe that person in the past life has to ask to come forward and they need to do their own regression and find you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, I was on planet Earth and people were fighting. <laughs> okay. uh, next question. We, I think we have. Well, okay, this will probably be the last question. So let me just okay. say, everybody, we would love to have you. There's risk-free 14-day past life regression adventure at tut.com. The details and the links are below on this page. You're now watching this video on live or recorded. Um, so long as you stayed on the tut website and you didn't go to YouTube. If you went to YouTube, just come on back. Um, mm -hmm. We won't take this page down in the immediate future. But the details are below. We'd love to have you. It's a price you choose. Money back guarantee. Um, check it out. We're it's going to be really, really fun. Uh, last question. How is our soul affected if we are cremated and not buried? Does that affect reincarnation? No. <laughs> Not at all, not at all, unless you have a very strong belief about that, that perhaps you could influence your state of being with that belief. Uh, but no, it really doesn't matter what you do with the body. There's a lot of different ceremonies that I've seen throughout regressions, because I always lead people also through the last day of a person's life to see what happens when you die, what that feels like, how it is to die. Um, it really doesn't matter what choice you what choice you have or what choice other people have all it's are all fine the, the the soul usually even leaves the body before the the whole body actually has passed mm -hmm. and yeah. the, the materiality is illusion anyway it's just mm -hmm. dense thought form so you know so mm -hmm. there's nothing to fear there or worry about there mariah you have been so generous to give us all of this insight and wet our whistle and just be fascinated i'm sure Doors in my mind have flown open, as in my heart. <laughs> I am super excited to do another couple of regressions with you starting next week. The details are below, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, check it out. We'll see you really soon. Um, lots of love. Thoughts become things. Uh, Mariah, any parting words? Yeah, Mike, thanks for, for offering this platform. I'm super excited to get the word out. I'm super excited to inform people about the amazing things of past life regression and the amazing past life regression work that is being done all over the world. You know, I'm in Berlin, but there's people in your environment doing them too. 
Uh, so yeah, you know, tap, tap into it, follow your inspiration, follow your curiosity and see where it leads. So thank all you, right. Mike. Okay. See you all on October 11. Thank you. Thank you. Adios. Bye. Bye.